Hello, and welcome to CHC's online presentation, ECW version C20 upgrade features. The purpose of this presentation is to provide you with an overview of the new ECW features that will affect your clinical workflow. Participants must complete the entire course, which includes the presentation and explanation of the new features in ECW 10 version C20, the presentation evaluation, and then a printable version, which is optional. Employees are able to print out a hard copy of the presentation. At the end of this presentation, you will have viewed our upgrade highlights, patient safety enhancements in the following areas, the right panel, the problem list section, the concurrent lock features in telephone encounters and more commonly used areas of the chart, medical summary, patient safety enhancements also in progress notes, medications, and allergies. There are new workflows in the progress notes and medication management. And finally, ICD-10 enhancements, how to convert ICD-9 codes to ICD-10. In this first section, upgrade highlights. Here are some important items to remember the weekend of our upgrade. Laptops and computers will be upgraded over the weekend starting November 12th. Your laptops must remain on site that weekend, the 12th and the 13th. This will ensure that your ECW application is updated prior to seeing patients on Monday morning. Records will need to be printed for patients scheduled on Saturday the 12th and as a precaution, Monday the 14th as well. ECW will not be available from 7.30 p.m. Friday, November 11th until 10 p.m. Sunday, November 12th. On Saturday the 12th, all sites will be closing at 12 noon including those normally open until 4 p.m. The phone lines will be rolled over to around the clock for coverage at 12 noon that Saturday. And finally, Novo, Centricity, Open Dental, and Outlook will be available for use. Next, Patient Safety Enhancements 1. The main changes in the C20 upgrade have to do with patient safety. ECW has upgraded its technology to provide triggers and alerts that help the users make the safest choices in their documentation of patient care. Let's begin with those safety features that will affect all clinical staff. Patient Safety Level 1. This section includes ICD level icons added to the problem list, the concurrent lock feature, medical summary enhancements, a new workflow, the removal of the pop-up, carry forward medications into the progress note. The right panel's problem list section now easily distinguishes between ICD-9 and ICD-10 codes using icons. This feature will help providers quickly identify the ICD-9 codes that need to be replaced on the problem list. For support staff, they will now understand the difference between the two and the new screen. There is a new feature called Concurrent Lock that blocks users from documenting in the same area of the chart. Since most clinical roles interact with telephone encounters, it's important that all staff be aware of how the Concurrent Lock feature will work in a TE. When more than one user accesses the same area of a chart simultaneously, the CHE standard workflow will be, when the access warning appears, users must remember to always click no to exit the window without making any changes. If the yes button is clicked, the changes you make will overwrite those of the first user. If access is urgent, you can send a link message to the user currently in the TE to close it as soon as possible. For a clear understanding of how the concurrent lock feature works, Review the following scenario. A PSA has answered the call of a patient that would like his test results. She has created a TE and sent it to the PCP. However, the PSA forgot to add some additional information, so she opens the TE again to add it. 
In the meantime, the provider opens the TE and decides to click the Yes button when the access warning advised her that the PSA was currently in the same telephone encounter. The provider writes her instructions in the TE, but notice that the information that was entered by the PSA is missing, the area highlighted in yellow. Returning to the PSA's window, when finished, she clicks the OK button and receives the following message. Other user has changed data when you were working. For patient data consistency, this screen will be closed. At which point, the information will be lost. There will be no record in the log history of what the PSA added. Here's what subsequent viewers will see. The PSA's original timestamp and the message sent to PCP, along with the provider's timestamp and message. For more clarification of this workflow, watch the following product demo. Recalling the scenario, the PSA has created a telephone encounter for a patient who would like their test results. She's assigned it to the provider, but remembered that she needed to add some additional information, so she opened it back up, and she's in the process of documenting that right now. However, in the meantime, the provider has seen the telephone encounter and goes to open it up. The access warning pops up advising them that someone else is already in it, and the provider goes ahead and clicks yes. They add their timestamp with the information to call the patient back, and they decide to go ahead and assign it to their nurse so that can be done. Returning back to the PSA screen, she finishes what she was typing in. and clicks OK to close the window. However, she receives the message that another user has changed the data. So she goes ahead and clicks OK. Now when we go back into that telephone encounter, what we'll see is the provider's information, but we don't see the timestamp that the PSA added. It's been lost. When we look into the log history, we can see the times that it's been modified, but the information that was overwritten is gone. So now you've had a chance to see the concurrent log feature in a telephone encounter. Remember, it was stated earlier that the concurrent lock or access warning message appears whenever two users are accessing the same window simultaneously. The following slides show a few of the additional areas in which the access warning will appear, and that will affect multiple clinical roles. The concurrent lock shows in the lab results and diagnostic imaging windows. When the warning appears, be certain to click the No button to avoid overriding the other user's actions. The Referrals window. Again, Click the No button to avoid overriding the other user's actions. Moving on to another patient safety feature, Medical Summary. Additional information has been added to the Medical Summary header. It now includes race, ethnicity, preferred language, and care team. Attention. New workflow. One last change that will affect multiple users concerns progress notes. Users will no longer be prompted to carry forward the current medications when opening the patient's visit note for today or future visits. Medications will no longer be pulled into the note by this prompt. Patient Safety Enhancements 2. The patient safety enhancements in this portion of the presentation affects the clinical users that document within the office visit. Patient Safety Level 2. This section includes the following, the concurrent lock feature in the progress notes, 
and a new workflow, printing out the medication list. The concurrent lock feature in Progress Notes. The data entry windows, or blue links, in the Progress Note window are also affected by the new patient safety feature concurrent lock, and it works the same as shown in previous slides. Here's the pop-up in the Chief Complaints window. Another important window that is affected by the feature is the current medication window. This time, click the Cancel button to avoid overwriting the other user's updates when the concurrent lock warning appears. Attention New Workflow Print the current medication list via medical summary link for the medical visit. Starting Monday, November 14th, for users that print out the current medication list at the beginning of the visit, it will now be printed via the medical summary link, instead of the print button at the bottom of the progress note window. This workflow will mainly affect the medical assistant and nursing roles. It will ensure that the medication list is not reconciled before the provider has had a chance to review it. The following slides review the new workflow. Step 1. From the Progress Note window, click the Medical Summary link on the Patient Dashboard. Step 2. In the Medical Summary window, first-time users, change your Print Facts options to view the medications by clicking the Print drop-down arrow and checking that option only. And finally, click the Print button to provide the patient with their current medication list. If you are a medical assistant, continue to advise the patient to review the list and report any changes to the provider. The final change regarding the medical summary window includes an addition of the status of each medication, as well as a stop date, if added, for the list of the current medication. Notice the changes in the screenshot below. Patient Safety Enhancements 3. The following enhancements covered in these slides will affect the providers and resources that handle patient care. Patient Safety Level 3. This section includes new workflow, how to pull current medication list into the visit, the locking reconciled medications feature, another new workflow managing the current medication list, and finally, patient safety warning when updating allergies and histories in the patient hub. Attention, new workflow, carrying forward current medications. With the removal of the carry forward current medications pop-up window, there is still a need for the medication list to be pulled into the progress note of each visit. At this time, that will be done by every provider and resource seeing patients. The following slides demonstrate how to bring current medications into the visit. Step 1. After opening the progress note, click the current medication link to open the window. Step 2. Once in the current medication window, click Apply Status from Prior Visit to bring in the medications. Step 3. Make the necessary changes based on the CHC Medication Reconciliation Policy and your role responsibilities, then close the window. The current medications list is now in the progress note and the system reconciliation is complete. Patient Safety Locking Reconciled Medications The next patient safety enhancement, Locking Reconciled Medications, is very important. Not only will it decrease the number of issues that providers encounter while maintaining an accurate medication list, but this feature has led to new clinical workflows. Let's talk about how the Locking Reconciled Medications feature works. Here's how it's explained. Medications that have been carried forward can no longer be edited on the medication reconciliation window of a previous encounter. These medications are grayed out, and when a user clicks on it, the pop-up window displays informing the user that the reconciled medications cannot be edited or deleted. 
This is from ECW's version 10 SP1-C20 release notes, page 15. A scenario to explain further. A patient has two appointments today, one with her medical provider, provider A, at 2.15 p.m., and the other with her psychiatric provider, provider B, at 4 p.m. Event number one. Provider B decides to prepare or review the current medication list early in the day. After opening the current medication window at 10 a.m., he clicks the Apply Status from Prior Visit button to carry forward the medications into the progress note, which triggers the system reconciliation. Event number two. Regardless of whatever else Provider B does in this window, Provider A and her 2.15 p.m. visit will not be able to make any changes to the medications that have now been reconciled in the future visit. All the medications have been grayed out, as you can see in the screenshot. Event number three. If Provider A tries to edit any of the grayed out medications, other than pull them into today's visit by clicking Apply Status from Prior Visit, this pop-up message will appear, which states, This medication cannot be deleted or edited as it has been reconciled in a future visit. Watch the following demo for another glance at the patient safety feature, Locking Reconciled Medications. As in the previous scenario, this patient has two appointments for the day. The first appointment is at 2.15 with the medical provider, and the second appointment is at 4 p.m. with the psychiatric prescriber. The psychiatric prescriber decides earlier in the day that she would like to take a look at the medication list and do a preparation for the patient. She opens up the appointment, and takes a look first at the current medication list. Looking at the list, she goes ahead and clicks Apply Status from Prior Visit and closes the window to move on to look at other things in the chart. And you can see that the medications are now listed as taking. Later on that day, when 2.15 arrives, the medical provider is ready to see their patient. So the note is opened up. And when he goes down to take a look at the current medications, those medications are grayed out. And that is because with the apply status from prior visit being selected earlier by the psychiatric prescriber, the system has locked that medication list. So the provider can click apply status and must from the prior visit so that the, all those medications are listed as taking. But if the provider provides medication such as tramadol, this medication cannot be deleted or edited as it has been reconciled in a future visit. The access warning appears. And so tramadol will have to be discontinued in the treatment section of the window. So you've had a chance to see one more time how the feature locking reconciled medications will work. Attention, new workflows. With the new feature, Locking Reconciled Medications, there is a need to change three common CHC workflows. These changes will help prevent the medication list from being reconciled too soon and locking out the provider and or resource from reconciling the medications in their visit. The first two workflows have already been discussed. First, printing the current medication list via the medical summary link. This workflow will affect medical assistants and anyone who prints out the medication list at the beginning of the visit. The second workflow, how to carry forward the current medication list in the visit by clicking the Apply Status from Prior Visit button. 
This workflow will affect providers and resources who need to pull the current medications list into the visit. The third new workflow is twofold. One, to avoid being blocked from reconciling the medication list, providers and resources need to finish medication reconciliation as soon as possible during or soon after the patient visit. And two, providers and resources need to avoid carrying forward the medication list prior to the patient's arrival. As a reminder, this is now done by opening the current medication window, then clicking the Apply Status from Prior Visit button. This is very important for everyone to remember. Once again, it is by clicking Apply Status from Prior Visit, which triggers the system to lock the medication list as reconciled. Patient Safety Current Medications, PRN Removed. Another patient safety change to the current medications window is the removal of the text PRN when the user selects the In Status button. Here's how it will display in the progress note. Look at the circled text in the screenshot below. Patient safety, right panel updates for the allergies and histories. When updating the allergy and history sections of the chart from the right panel, the user is now warned that those updates will not show in a visit prior to the current date and time. Users can update the right panel sections from the patient hub. If a user decides to update the patient's allergies or histories because of newly received information from results or another outside source, the user can click the Select button, the orange square with three dots, to add. The patient safety warning will pop up immediately. Click OK to continue. ICD-10 Enhancements The following enhancements covered in these slides will affect the providers and resources that utilize ICD codes. ICD-10 Enhancements This section of the presentation includes utilizing the ICD-9 to ICD-10 converter and billing alert for an ICD-9 warning. ICD-10 Enhancements Problemless Converter. ECW has added tools that make it easier to update the problem list with the appropriate ICD-10 code. There are two areas from which this can be done. From the Patient Hub and the Right Panel within the Progress Note. From the Patient Hub, users can select the PL9 to PL10 button to update older ICD-9 codes that are still in the problem list. In the next window, select the ICD-9 code from the left side list, then choose the correct ICD-10 code from the right side. Next, the system message lets you know that the change was made successfully. However, if necessary, click the Undo link to start again. Repeat as many times as necessary then click the OK button when finished. When returning to the patient hub, the codes will be changed in the problem list. If the change is not noticeable, click another tab on the right panel and then return to the Overview tab to refresh. The second area where you can correct the ICD-9 codes is from the Progress Notes right panel. Click the arrow next to the ICD-9 code listed in the right panel to open the converter window. Once in the converter window, the steps are the same as before. Select the ICD-9 code from the left side list, then choose the correct ICD-10 code from the right side. Again, the system message lets you know that the change was made successfully. If necessary, click the Undo link to start again. Repeat as many times as necessary, then click the OK button when done. Step 3. When returning to the Progress Note window, the codes will be changed in the problem list. If the change is not visible, click the Refresh button. 
And finally, step four, the problems will also be added to today's assessments. Watch the following demo to see again how the converter works in these two areas of the chart. As shown in the previous slides, if a patient has ICD-9 codes in their problem list, you can use the converter tool in ECW to quickly make the change. In the patient hub, click on the PL9 to 10 button, and the converter tool will appear with the ICD-9 codes on the left and their corresponding ICD-10 codes on the right. Select the code that you want to change, diabetes is already highlighted, and on the right I'll go ahead and choose E11-9. You get a message that it's been successfully added, and now there's also an undo link, so if I change my mind, I can start again. And it just tells me that the undo will delete the ICD-9 and ICD-10 mapping. I'll go ahead and click OK and start over again. Now when I close this window, the diabetes code is still showing as 9. But simply click on another tab on the right side panel and then go back to the overview tab. I basically just refresh the screen and now I can see the new ICD-10 code for the diabetes type 2. The second way you were shown to make that change is right from the progress note. When I go into the progress note for this patient, you can see the ICD-9 codes listed. And this time what I'm going to do, I'll scroll down a little bit so you can see the assessment window is I'm going to go ahead and click the arrow next to the ICD-9 code. The converter tool comes up again and you can see the ICD-9 codes on the left with their corresponding ICD-10 codes on the right. So for acne, I'll go ahead and choose one of the options, acne unspecified, and it's also updated. When I click OK, the problem list is updated with the corresponding ICD-10 code. And also, that problem has been added to the assessment with the correct code as well. So those are the two areas where you can quickly convert your ICD-9 codes to ICD-10. ICD-10 Enhancements Billing Alert ICD-9 Warning This enhancement will be much appreciated. Once the Done button has been clicked, users will see a warning window when an ICD-9 code has been added to the progress note by mistake. When exiting the Billing window, click the Done button. If there are any ICD-9 codes selected, a warning window will appear, as you see below. Close the warning window. To correct, there are two options. Either return to the billing window and remove the incorrect code and add the proper ICD-10 code, or from the assessment section of the progress note, do the same. First, here are the steps for the billing window option. Step 1, reopen the billing window and select the ICD-9 code, then click the Remove button. The next step click the Add button to search for the new code. Here's a tip for you. Remove the ENM code first, then re-add once the correct ICD-10 code has been chosen. Once in the Select Assessment window, search by the description. This is the easiest solution and allows the user to pick the ICD-10 code, which is identified by the icon. However, if you search by the ICD-9 code, and select the code again, a converter tool will pop up giving choices of the corresponding ICD-10 codes. After you have selected the code, returning to the billing window, ensure that the correct ICD-10 code is in the correct position and re-add the ENM code. The second option, and the best practice, 
is to replace the ICD-9 code directly from the assessment section of the progress note window. It's more efficient because there are less steps needed to get the same result. Step 1. Once the ICD-9 warning window closes, the user is returned to the progress note. Scroll up to the assessment section and click the ICD-9 icon. Step 2. The first time, a confirmation window will pop up. Check the box, Don't show this confirmation next time, and then click Yes. Step 3. Select the correct ICD-10 code in the converter window, and then click Apply. Step 4. Returning to the progress note, the assessment is updated, and so is the problem list. And finally, Step 5. The code is automatically updated in the billing window and linked to the ENM code. So there's nothing for you to do except to re-click the Done button. The purpose of this presentation was to provide you with an overview of the new features available in the ECW C20 upgrade, which included patient safety features, the concurrent lock in multiple areas of the chart, medical summary demographic enhancements, the removal of the carry forward message. New workflows included printing the medication list and reconciling medications. And finally, ICD-10 enhancements including a converter tool and a billing alert for ICD-9 codes. Don't forget, we go live November 14th. Thank you for viewing this CHC online presentation.